Hello, Horror Tree friends, family and followers. I'm Sarah Elliott and I'm joined today by Michael Gaydos and Stephen S. Denight. Hi, Michael. Hi, Stephen. Thanks for joining Hello. us. <laughs> Be here. In tandem. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just give a quick intro to both of you. So, Michael, you have been working with the Illustrated Word for over 30 years, working in graphic novels. Uh, like big you're hurting me here. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got DC, Think Jessica Jones, everybody, Marvel, Random House, Dark Horse Comics, and Stephen Esther Knight works as a writer on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, seasons five and six, story editor. Um, what else have we got under your belt? We've got you a showrunner for Daredevil, also writer, director for Smallville, Angel, all my favourites actually, Dollhouse as well, <laughs> Spartacus, and I think the fans are just waiting for House of Asher, so you might have some news about that, we'll see. Right. And also writer and director, Pacific Rim Uprising. Wow. So, mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. My first question to both of you is comics. I'm getting that you like comics and graphic novels. So how did you first get into comics and graphic novels? Is it from childhood? When did it start? How did you get them? Where did you read them? Come on, spill. Well, who's who's going who's gonna to go first? I want to hear what, how Michael got into it. All right. Well, I, I got in like when I was probably, you know, like five years old. My my uh, uncle, he uh, he was kind of an artist. And he collected comics and he gave me my first comic, which was like a Justice League. And I can't remember what issue it was. And he used to draw superheroes for me. And from then on, you know, you know, I, I was born in 66 and the Batman show was on and I loved Batman. And from then, you know, I, I wanted to be a comic artist. And, uh, you know, that, that kind of went through to uh, high school and into college. But, you know, in college, I, I realized, you know, there's a world of fine art out there. And, you know, that kind of uh, drew me in. And I was kind of conflicted between doing the comics and the fine art. And fortunately, it was right about the time that... Uh, you know, a lot of the comics were changing with Kent Williams and Bill Sienkiewicz and George Pratt. And they, they were having a lot of the uh, fine art influence. And I was like, this is perfect. You know, this is what I want to do. So. I, I think Michael and I were separated at birth. I was born, <laughs> I, like it. <laughs> I was born in 65 in a similar story. My cousin lived across the street and he was now i think 16 or 17 and thought he was too old for comics so he he gave me a box of his comics and these were all justice league green lantern superman flash all the classic old comics and um i couldn't quite read them yet uh, but I would page through them and, and look at the pictures and make up my own stories. And a couple of years later, when I could actually read them, uh, I, of course, was astounded that the stories were nothing like I had made. Them. <laughs> uh, and from that point, I just love comics. I actually wanted to be a comic book artist when I was a kid growing up and took art lessons, but uh, just it didn't quite have the feel for it. But I had always loved comics and all the way through college i went to santa cruz in the mid 80s and of course you know watchmen came out and uh the dark knight returns came out and i just loved all that so much and that just continued on through my career uh you know i do a lot of genre work with buffy and angel and dollhouse and daredevil and and uh, uh, just uh, all of us working on the shows always kept up and read comics and loved comics. And I always thought, well, I'm, the art thing has flown away from me after many, many years, but I would still love to dip my toe in the comics. So, you know, I did an issue of the Buffy comic and uh, enjoyed that. I, uh, we did a couple of issues of a tie-in for Spartacus 
And then years went by. I was too busy. Uh, uh, but then I, I did a couple of uh, one shots for Marvel and I really loved doing it. But like, I think a lot of people, especially people in the entertainment business, you realize, uh, oh my God, I, it's so time intensive. It really makes no <laughs> sense to like do a comic for Marvel. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really turned my attention that, that I wanted to do my, my own stuff, my own graphic novels. And uh, Beneath was one of two that came out of that. And it was just like a dream come true. I just, I had I loved comics all my life. And then to actually get to, to do a fully realized project, especially with someone like Michael, who I've just admired for years and years, was a real dream come true. Oh, wow. Thank you. Can you imagine working with you about your homework is to read a bunch of comics every night? Yeah, <laughs> it's still like ever. Yeah, that'll be a plus. <laughs> so how did this particular collaboration come about? How did the opportunity for Beneath come about? What was the kind of inspiration for the story? Well, I, I'll, I'll tell you, um, I had a meeting years ago with Universal um, that, and they were relaunching for like the, the umpteenth time their classic monsters division. Uh, this was uh, a year or two before Invisible Man came out. Uh, and they said, look, take a look at our catalog, see if anything, eh, you know, strikes your fancy. And they said, but of course, the big titles are already taken. You know, Creature from the Black Lagoon, uh, The Wolfman, Frankenstein, uh, don't even look at those. Um, so they, they gave me a, a little thumb drive with all of their classic movies on it. And of course, I'd seen them all. Uh, uh, mostly when I was a kid. And there's one title that caught my attention was a, a, a creaky old 1930s movie called The Mole People, if you've mm -hmm. ever seen that one. And it's kind of like a lost horizons with creatures. It's, it's these explorers end up in this like Shangri-La underground uh, utopian society with one little problem, the, the, the workers are these mole people that, you know, uh, are in the background. They're, they're slaves. They're basically slaves, and, and they're very poorly treated. And the mole people have nothing to do with the movie whatsoever, except in the third act, the mole people go bananas and revolt and start killing everybody. <laughs> so um, I thought, hey, uh, there's a modern interpretation here. And... Uh, uh, years before that, I had had an idea to try to remake uh, the giant atomic ant movie, Them. Mm -hmm. And that's where the opening of the graphic novel comes from, with undocumented immigrants crossing into the United States and getting sucked underground. And the original idea was they find out it's giant ants. I thought, hey, I really like that opening. Um, but at the time, uh, you know, when I was meeting with Universal, there was a, a lot of, of news stories about the for-profit uh, immigration detention centers and how awful they were. And I thought, well, these all these elements come together nicely because mm -hmm. I, I love a, a good social underpinning to a story. So I, I whipped up the story uh, with the idea of, you know, a, a possible remake of The Mole People, even though it had nothing to do with The Mole People whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, and pitched it and everybody liked it, but it was like too small for Universal and uh, Blumhouse was doing The Invisible Man and it was too expensive for them with the creature work. So I said, ah, to hell with it. I'm gonna make up my own story and my own mythology and uh, and do it as a graphic novel. So that's basically how, it, how the idea came about. And I was originally talking to IDW about doing it. And then the person I was talking to left the company and she suggested I talk to her contact at Comixology. That went great. Um, I got an editor on the project, uh, Allison O'Toole, who was wonderful. And Allison and I started talking about artists, you know, uh, and I basically told her what style I was looking for generally and and she said, uh, uh, let me think about it. And then she calls me up and says, uh, what do you think about Michael Gatos? I go, we'll never get him. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I would kill to have him do this book. And sure enough, that's where Michael comes in. 
Wow, Michael, how how did why did you say yes? You know, how did they get? Well, you? I you know I have never done an original graphic novel, and you know I really haven't done anything in like the horror genre, mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, I thought it would be you know something very interesting to do. I mean, Stephen has such you know uh, history and you know with his uh tv shows and movies and stuff like that and it's like it's like yeah I'd, I'd be you know silly to say no to that so uh you know i was like oh yeah yeah no let's let, let, let's do it and plus i was kind of like in between things and you know as a freelance artist you know you you have to you have to you know keep going you know you, you, you that that free time you have to fill up <laughs> so and I thought, you know, oh, th this sounds like a great thing that, you know, that's different. And that's the thing, you know, I've been doing this for so long that I like uh, doing things that I haven't done before. So and that's important for me because it gets me excited about doing them. Um, you know, even even the way that I work is kind of, uh, you know, haphazardly. And, you know, so, so I like, I like, you know, just, you know, kind of throwing myself into something and just not knowing, you know, what's going to happen. So, and this, this is, this was this, uh, you know, scenario. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and this one of the many things that I love about Michael's work is he does his own colors. And if you look at the book, um, you know, the script doesn't have those fantastic color choices that you made michael that i just loved when i got the pages because section is so distinct and different it just really elevates the, the whole proceedings yeah well well uh, you know you, you have to i mean i mean comics are so close to movies and television mm -hmm. you know you, you you have to kind of you know, i i think of it in that way so you know i mean you you look at scenes and you you know if you're looking through a comic you know one scene is going to be you know this tone and you know it's going to feed into another scene which is just going to be this tone and you know it's, it's that type of feel you know i i don't want everything to just kind of be you know the same type of feeling because i mean the, the color can add so much to the story and uh i mean we see that in movies all the time and yeah. I mean, it, it's, I mean, it's, and comics is a perfect, you know, place for that. So. Yeah, I thought it was just a brilliant choice. And, and <laughs> I, I'm just going to lather Michael up and down. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's, it, it, and, it, and it's fun for me because, you know, I get to experiment, you know, in this different way because I haven't done like a horror type thing. So, you know, I'm trying to think of ways, you know, that, uh, you know, I can show anxiety or I can show, mm. you know, somebody being, you know, confined or, you know, all these different elements and, uh, you know, trying to make it work. So, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, all the I mean, I'm not a, and, you know, to be honest, I'm not a big horror guy. So, you know, I, I you know, I'm looking at, say, you know, maybe Alien or, you know, I'm looking mm. at Predator, you know, I'm looking at things like that. Yeah. yeah um you know so uh where uh all those elements in it and the the color scheme and stuff is very important to you know yeah. the uh movie so yeah and i i gotta say this was such an easy smooth collaboration <laughs> on my side wait, wait like, which i love which is good <laughs> you and, this stuff and i was like holy shit this is incredible <laughs> Well, well, I, I, I like working with writers that are very open to uh, uh, letting me kind of do what I want to do. And then, you know, I, I don't have any problem uh, changing things afterwards, but yeah. I don't do I don't do a lot of like sketches and stuff uh, beforehand because I like to throw myself right into the page. And to just kind of, you know, mix it up, you know, there. And um, because this this uh, particular thing, you know, I was doing mostly, you know, on the computer. 
you know, with the, the tablet and stuff like that, that I, I knew it was easy to make changes. So I rather, you know, throw everything out at you first and yeah. see, you know, if you like it or not. And I, it was easy for me to make changes, but I, 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 and also I think some of the thing is too, I didn't want to give you guys hints of what I was doing because mm -hmm. I didn't want you to, you know, kind of, uh, beforehand kind of get a, an idea of what it was. So, you know, throw it at Joel at once. <laughs> Which was great uh, for me. It was, <laughs> it was thrilling to get those pages not having sketches or rough layouts. Yeah. And uh, way more often than not, you would do something. And I'm like, ah, I wish I had thought of that. That's <laughs> <laughs> and, and any small changes. Again, it was so easy. I say, hey, can we see this guy's face more? No mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely process. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's something that I picked up, you know, with working with uh, Bendis for so long. You know, he he trusts me in doing things. And he, he has always said that uh, one of his favorite things is, you know, getting the pages because, you know, he trusts the artist to change things. Yeah. And, and, you know, he gets something and he gets it back and, it, and it's very different than maybe, you know, what he wrote. But he's like, wow, yeah. And then, he, you know, he goes back and he, you know, rewrites it and stuff like that. But it's, uh, you know, it's that trusting each other to, you know, just kind of, you know, move the process and move the story along and, you know, try to get the, you know, the feeling that we want to get. So. Yeah. And the colour made a huge difference to how you like how you felt when you were reading it as well so you could see like all the like the changes in tone and emotions yeah. and even you know whereabouts the story was taking place and right. I think there were a couple of places in the story where color has a massive impact it really is like whoa okay. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> didn't see no, that coming. I, yeah no no I, I I love color and uh yeah so you know it's uh and, and again, you know, I mean, a lot of that comes from, uh, you know, movies. Um, so, and I mean, movies and comics, I mean, they're, they're so combined together. And, uh, you know, although uh, it, it's funny because, you know, I, I take my son to, uh, you know, the Marvel movies and stuff like that. And you stay till the end because you want to watch the, you know, the end after the credits and stuff like that. And you see all the names and names and names. And I look over to him and it's like, you know how many people it takes to make a comic? It's like a writer, an artist, an editor, a letter, a letter. <laughs> so, you know, four people, you know, at, at the least, you know, to make a comic book. And, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And I think that, uh, you know, a lot of times I think that, to be honest, I mean, it just may be, you know, I'm impartial that, you know, that comic books, a lot of comics are so much better than movies. And, uh, you know, and. Uh, and and I, I can tell you, having made a movie, um, what I love about comics and, and working with you and Allison and Comixology is, you know, when you make a movie, You've got a thousand people giving you notes and everybody yeah, loses uh -huh, yeah. fun because it's so much money. One of the great things about comicsology, I turned in the script, never heard anything. <laughs> you know, one note, they left us alone to, uh -huh. to do the comic. And and Allison was great because she had a, a a couple of really, really insightful comments. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's a, yeah, that's a, good she's idea. a great editor. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, no, it was it was it was a uh, it was uh, easy going, very smooth, very smooth. So and uh, which is which is a good thing. So you ruined me. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, life. I'm very, very happy with how it came out. So oh, it's it's gorgeous. It yeah. Is. Every yeah. time I crack that open, I just or over the artwork uh michael it is just stunning no work. no and i mean, I mean and, and that comes from a good story too so uh you know and it, it, it's just you know having you know i i got involved you know 
right away. And I was just kind of, you know, with every script that I get into, you know, I kind of play act, you know, all the characters. Because, I mean, you know, as an artist, you're kind of playing, you know, you're being the director and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, I do that. And, uh, I mean, you, you were, uh, you know, very open to me, you know, changing, you know, a couple of the ideas, you know, I think, like with uh, Pritchard, I wanted to make yeah. him you know, a little different and, uh, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think, you know, it really, it, it, ha it has a good feel to it. Definitely. Yeah. So it's, it's very, you know, I, I think it's very easy to read and very easily, you know, for somebody to get uh, sucked up into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so much more than what is um you what you initially see on the page. So I mean the reviews are coming in and people are saying um it's tremors minus the laughs. <laughs> and that is that's interesting because you think you're wondering what you know what is underground, what is gonna actually appear. Mm -hmm. uh, people yeah. are saying that there was an influence from Assault on Precinct 13. Um, Absolutely, yeah. The John Carpenter, that was a yeah. huge influence on this. <laughs> Um, first off, if you're looking for a solid, terrifying monster story, this is it. Gory dread infuses every page. Artwork <laughs> is first class. And the story will have you on the edge of your seat or hiding behind the couch. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the review. So, so that's funny because, because like, like I said, I'm not a big horror person. So, you know, I've never seen Tremors. I've never seen Precinct 13. So and and it's funny because I do a lot of um, role playing game uh, illustrations, which are, you know, a lot of horror derived. OK, and I never played, you know, those games. So, you know, I feed upon which is scary. My head, <laughs> which which, you know, I, I have dreams that, you know, dreams, dreams, dreams that, you know, fulfill all those, you know, scary <laughs> stuff that, you know, that I draw. <laughs> so. I'm going to push you to watch Assault on Precinct 13, not a horror okay. movie. Yeah, it's not okay. horror. Yeah, it's very It's cool. John Carpenter's, I guess you would say it's technically his second movie after Dark Star. Uh, but Dark Star, uh, he did with Dan O'Bannon. It started as, I think, a college thesis project, and then they expanded it, and it got released. Um, Assault on Precinct 13, I believe, was his first, you know, start to finish theatrical release. It's this fantastic little action thriller. And the story is this uh, Precinct 13, this police station is closing down. It's got a wow. skeleton crew. The phones yeah. have been turned off. And um, this guy with blood all over him uh, uh, comes rushing in. His daughter has just been shot by these crazy anarchist uh, gang members. And he ends up shooting the the head of the of the uh, uh, of the gang before he gets to the police station. And then the whole thing is at night with this gang trying to overtake this police station. And there's one busload of criminals in there. So the cops and the criminals have to work together, which was obviously a huge influence uh -huh. on yeah. Beneath. Yeah. Fantastic crackerjack little movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I mean, in, in that regards, I I, you know, not seeing a lot of horror stuff. So I, you know, going through this and doing it, I didn't know if it was scary enough what I was doing or if it was, you know, I was trying to get more, I think the, uh, the tension between mm. uh, characters and, you know, the tension in scenes and stuff like that, rather than, you know, the actual horror stuff, because I didn't know, you know, what would be, you know, scary to somebody reading, you know, a book and stuff like that, because, well, you know, that that's not usually you know the stuff that I am interested in. So, and that's where I think that's why this was a perfect collaboration because, um, you know, I, I wrote it specifically where you don't know what's underground until the middle of the book. So it's all about tension, and uh, and the characters. Uh, is for me, you've got to have great characters or your story just falls apart. And mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that and that that's. 
all through you know my comics career that that's the most important thing for me is the character so absolutely and it's it's what and it, does so well yeah and, it, and it's always been it's 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 character 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 um so uh you know and you know that that that's something you know i you know really strive to do and you know make sure that you know when I, I do a panel, you know, it is evocative of, you know, what the person is saying and what's going on around them and stuff like that. So, I mean, that that is very important to me. So, And I, I got to point out, I, I absolutely love your character work. Frank, the guy who runs the detention. <laughs> oh, oh that, that, okay. that's, my, that, that's my brother-in-law. Oh, <laughs> Perfect. Well, your brother-in-law, I said thank you because that is just perfect. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I, I, I keep an inventory in my head of like all these faces that I see, and then you know, whenever a, a project mm -hmm. comes up, it's like, what? Well, who's gonna be this person? Who's gonna be this person? Who's gonna That's be great. This person? Yeah. So. That's really interesting. So there, yeah. there's so much to this book, honestly, there's so much. And it's, you know, you've got the the artwork, the characters, the story, but you also hit so many different human themes as well. Like you're looking at this capitalism, immigration, borders, racism, stereotyping, prejudice, uh, mythology, legend. It's it's all in there. It's just kind of like layered in. And what Stephen, what was your kind of intention for telling this story? Oh, exactly. You know, I, I, one of the great things about genre is it often comments on the social situations of the time. And this is certainly no different. I mean, it wears its heart on its sleeve. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the the question of immigration is such a hot one in this country and, and one that at least one political party seems not to want to solve and instead just kick that football around. Uh, to get people riled up and uh, but I was really interested in you know the people who get caught up in that um, the vast majority of which are just striving for a better life and and how uh, you know the the capitalist system can really crush that and and force them into a bad position but also acknowledging that not everybody's a good person uh, you know, there's at least one among that group that, in fact, shouldn't be in the country uh, because he's up to no good. But is he a bad guy? Is, you know, uh, he, not in this story, he's certainly not a bad guy. And also just to really, you know, kind of look at that both sides, you know, because Frank, who runs the detention center, he's got a point to a certain extent. He doesn't express it reasonably. <laughs> Um, but then, you know, uh, one of the, one of the undocumented, uh, immigrants also has a point. Uh, there, there's a, a bit in the book where, uh, you know, one of the characters says something like, ah, you know, we didn't need you, 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 you know, you should go back to your own country. And, uh, the other, the undocumented immigrant says, yeah, you don't need us unless you want us to pick your crops or clean your house or, um, and it's also, you know, when I started working on this book, which was a couple of years ago, um, we're now looking at, you know, Project 2025 that wants to uh, deport 10 million people. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how any reasonable human can think you're going to deport 10 million um, undocumented immigrants. What do you think is going to happen? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you think are going to happen to the crops, to the infrastructure, to construction? It'll all collapse. You know, where what really needs to be done is, I'm getting on my soapbox, uh, <laughs> forgive me, what really needs to be done is the whole immigration process needs to be properly funded and retooled so there's actually a fast system to address people who want to immigrate, uh, or immigrate into the country. And, and that way also be able to, you know, um, weed out those that shouldn't be here, as opposed to those just looking to work hard and have a better life. 
So all of that kind of mixed together in this story, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. along with some mythology uh, uh, about uh, Mexico and what's under the ground in Mexico. That 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 was those those uh, pages were some of my favorite pages to do with the the flashback pages. Really cool. I love those. You know, and I was so happy with how they turned out. You know, because I mean, you know, when when, when you're when you're doing, you know, you know, so much, you know, you kind of need a break and do something else. <laughs> And, and I mean, that was perfect for me. And I, I love trying to, you know, get something that had that feel, the proper feel, you yeah. know, for it. So, and it was, uh, and I was very happy with how that turned out. So that was a perfect example of getting pages that was nothing like I had in my mind and going, <laughs> oh, that's it. I and, know I, and, and I had no, I had no idea what I had in mind until I started doing it. So, you know, I just kind of, you know, I started throwing things together and, you know, just, you know, scrambling and, uh, you know, that's what I came up with. And it's like, oh, Super yeah, cool. that's good. You know? Yeah, there's a lot of moments where you're reading, it's like, oh, oh, I didn't think that was going to happen. Or it's like, <laughs> oh, just looking at like how the page changes. Oh, that's mm-hmm. different. It's, you know, yeah. quite a departure from the previous page. That's great. One thing that I did really like was the um the reveal of the monster, that single <laughs> final page. I was like, mm-hmm. oh. So how much of that was you, Michael, and how much of that was you, Stephen? Oh, I'll say it's, it's almost all Michael. Oh, no, no, no. no, no. I had a couple I, of small comments. Like half, I, I would, because, you know, I he, 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 he definitely gave me, you know, what, he kind of wanted the monster to be and you know i tried to follow that and you know i found you know some some of the things that you know you, you wanted uh the skin very pale that you could see something you know underneath and then that, that i i found that very difficult to do oh it's impossible <laughs> in <the comic. laughs> so, so in some cases you can you can see that you know there but uh Otherwise, I mean, I just followed what, you know, you kind of wanted. And, uh, you know, and then just uh, it, it evolved to, you know, the place where that I kind of found that it was uh, scary to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, and then, uh, you know, from there, you know, we went on. The, 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 the one... The one, the one panel that I I liked was though. Uh, oh no, I'm I'm forgetting the uh, the girl's name that was in the jail. The the pregnant girl. Oh, and, uh, Anna, I think. Anna, and when she and when she comes back, and yes. you know she has, you know, I made it. I try to make it, you know, that you can actually see, you know, the fetus, you know, in the belly there. And oh shit! I gotta go back and look at that. I think I yeah, yeah, it. yeah. You know, so so you know, I mean, it. I mean, it's not it's not very clear, but you know, there there is you know the outline and stuff like that because that's the whole idea that you had, you know, that the translucent skin right. and stuff like that. And I thought that was you know very important because you know, uh, you know, she was pregnant and you know stuff like that. So I never thought of that. If I ever do this as a movie, I'm gonna make sure that's in it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And it really does lend itself to being a movie as well. When I finished reading, I was like, I enjoyed that movie. Like it, it actually <laughs> was it, it actually was a movie, a movie in my hand. Yeah. Well but, well, I mean that that you know, doing comics, that that's how I think of it, you know. I, I think of it as, you know, a movie, you know, on paper, you know. I mean, but uh I mean I think what's great about comics though is that uh you know not everything is revealed so you know you can have a panel and then you can have another panel and then it's the viewer that has to kind of uh you know fill in in between those you know Mm -hmm. you know so i mean they they they, the same way you know when you're reading a book i guess you know that you have to you know fill in you know what you're seeing but you know uh in a movie i mean it's all right there up for you but but this way, you know, from panel to panel is, you know, you, you kind of fill in, 
you know, those things. And I, I guess, you know, for uh, every person, it may be, you know, a little different. But, you know, I, I think that's the fun thing about it. So, yeah. And I, I definitely, because of my background, uh, when I do graphic novels, uh, I, I approach it just like writing a movie. I, I usually use a three act structure. Uh, very tight three act structure, which especially in this book, it's very clearly a three act structure, which I think lends itself to that movie feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So my kind of like final question to both of you is what's next or what what's happening now? What else have you got project wise and what's coming up? So Michael, what's your kind of like next project? Well, well, uh, well, I, 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 saw one of Steven's uh, last interviews and in saying that, you know, there may be a sequel. So, uh, <laughs> oh, give me the first to know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And now in the meantime, actually I'm doing, uh, uh, I just finished up a short story from my friend, uh, uh, he's a writer, Joe Pruitt. And, uh, he, uh, he last year he had a couple of strokes so he's putting a comic book out of short stories that he has written to uh try to get some money for his you know medical bills and uh i'm very very happy with how the story came out so um uh i wish i could remember the, what the name of the book is <laughs> but uh you know that and that that's coming out and uh you know and like like any other freelance person, you know, just trying to you know scrape and get by and uh, line things up. So wonderful. Well, we'll, right, we'll we, see, we, we, we should we should do a book every year. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> you better but clear your diary, Michael. Such a great time. <laughs> uh, for me, I've got uh, a hard bargain from Humanoids coming out uh, later this year. And uh, the Spartacus spinoff, House of Asher, next year, we're hard at work shooting that in New Zealand right now. And Stephen, uh, I have to ask you, will we ever get a Spaghetti Western from you? Spaghetti <laughs> Western? I have written a Spaghetti Western. We're about to take it out, uh, shop it around next month. So oh. cross my fingers. I certainly hope so. I grew up on spaghetti westerns at the drive-in. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to do one. I've always wanted to do a spaghetti western, and I've always wanted to do a martial arts movie. So first, ah. the yeah. and then I, I, along with the spaghetti westerns at at the drive-in uh, when I was a kid, my dad always used to take me. I, that's where I also saw all the classic Shaw Brothers kung fu movies. Uh huh. And I, I have always wanted to do one of those. So oh, hopefully yeah. the Western first, and then you'll get a uh, a martial arts movie out of me. Or a combination wow. of both. Hey, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to come and speak to us. Uh, thank you so much for the creative childhoods that you had as well, because that's what's kind of like <laughs> brought us to this moment. So mm -hmm. Beneath is available now. I think it was out, it's been out since August the 6th. Um, you can get it on Comixology, Amazon. Um, it is a great read. You have to go back and read yeah. it a few times. Yeah, yeah and I think it's coming out in hard copy next year. So yes, yeah. I think yeah. Dark Horse yeah. is going to release it next year. Oh, and yeah. hopefully, hopefully we'll have a bunch of extras. So that'll make oh. it a fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Steve yeah. and Michael, thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Fantastic. Bye, everybody. Yeah.